After a challenging two years, the global air show industry burst back to life in 2022 in all its pre-pandemic variety and splendour. In this, the first film in our two-part air show action series, we look back at the year's defining military air show action, the anniversaries, special schemes and one-off displays that made 2022 stand out from any other year. This was a year that saw the return of some of the world's largest military air shows, among them the Royal International Air Tattoo in the UK and Air Power in Austria. We enjoyed plenty of US Air Force action in the Air Arms 75th anniversary year. The always impressive combined arms demonstration at Nellis was a particular highlight, as was a three-ship strategic bomber flypast at Ellsworth. Another of this year's big stories was the Black Eagles World Tour, which saw them perform their highly acclaimed aerobatic display in Europe, Africa and Asia. This year, the Royal Air Force revived its synchro pair display featuring a typhoon and Spitfire, and France performed a three-ship Rafale tactical display. We also enjoyed seeing a remarkable performance by one of the world's most experienced fighter pilots, Captain Stephen de Vries, flying his specially painted F-16 in ways we've never seen at an airshow before. This is Airshow Action 2022. This programme was filmed by Airshow Stuff, This Is Flight and Planes TV. To see uncut, unnarrated videos of individual airshow performances, visit the Airshow Stuff YouTube channel. For many more airshow documentaries in this style, filmed right around the world, visit This Is Flight. Finally, you can get discounted access to Planes TV's 30-year archive of airshow programmes at the link in the video description. We start with the 75th anniversary of the US Air Force and a look back at some of their many aircraft that went on display this year. One of the largest celebrations of the anniversary was at AirVenture, which saw a rare four-ship heritage flight featuring an F-35A Lightning II and three P-51D Mustangs. Later in the year, the F-35 demo team headed to the Central Coast Air Fest in Santa Maria, where they performed perhaps their most impressive display of the season in extremely humid weather conditions. The F-35 is known for producing enormous quantities of vapour, occurring when the low pressure area above the wing and fuselage is cooled below the dew point of the surrounding air, which causes the moisture within it to condense. Normally, the vapour forms over the surfaces which are producing the most lift, but during this fast pass, the aircraft is travelling transonic, creating an area of low pressure that completely encircles the fuselage. At the end of the demonstration, another very impressive heritage flight this time featuring a P-51D Mustang and a P-38J Lightning. Unlike the F-35, the F-15 is not represented by an official demonstration team, but it still made several airshow appearances in 2022.
one of the most memorable appearances was this two-ship mini-demonstration at the Cleveland National Air Show. These are C-model F-15s, single-seat air superiority fighters which are due for retirement in the next few years. It's far from the end for the F-15 in US service though. Some F-15Cs will be replaced by the F-15EX, while the F-15E will also continue to serve. In May, we visited Ellsworth AFB, home of the 28th Bomb Wing and one of two B-1 Lancer bases in the United States. But the B-1 wasn't the only strategic bomber to feature in the flying display. It was joined by a B-52 and B-2 for a formation flypast, before each type filed past in turn. 2022 was a big year for the USAF, not just because of their anniversary, but also because it was the year the B-2's successor, the B-21 Raider, was finally unveiled. It is anticipated that the B-21 will replace the B-1 and B-2 by 2040, and possibly take over from the B-52 as well. After leading the three-ship mixed formation, the first B-1 joined up with a second example for a pairs formation pass. Selfridge Air National Guard Base also staged an air show with impressive use of their locally based assets, in this case three A-10 Thunderbolt IIs which performed an aerial refuelling demonstration with a KC-135, followed by an airfield attack demonstration. With its straight dihedral wing and large ailerons, the A-10 enjoys outstanding manoeuvrability at low airspeeds, making it easier for crews to track and attack small ground targets. This makes the aircraft vulnerable to ground fire, and thus it's been designed as one of the most heavily armoured and durable aircraft in history. The A-10 is able to make gear-up landings without sustaining major damage, withstand direct hits from high explosives and even keep flying with half a wing missing. While there was no single official anniversary airshow, arguably the largest USAF event this year was Aviation Nation at Nellis AFB. As usual, the highlight was the traditional combined arms demonstration, involving more than a dozen fast jets and rotary assets. This scenario sees two aggressor-schemed F-16s attack an Allied airbase. An F-22A Raptor is scrambled to intercept them. The Raptor quickly bears down on the F-16s and chases them away from the airfield, but it's unable to score a kill for the time being. field has come under attack from land forces, so friendly A-10s and F-15s arrive on the scene to deal with the threat.
but the enemy is expecting them and greets them with surface-to-air missiles. The A-10 is forced to break off its attack and deploy its decoy flares. The enemy's air defences must be neutralised before the battle can continue. This is achieved by F-35s and F-16s. The ground forces have now been neutralised, but the fight is far from over. The enemy F-16s return and manage to shoot down one of the Allied aircraft, before themselves being eliminated by the F-35s. The Allied pilot is able to eject and lands on the airfield in the middle of the fight. This paves the way for the final stage of the combined arms demonstration, as two HH-60s are called in to mount a combat search and rescue mission. In the meantime, A-10s continue to provide close air support, while the F-15s maintain air superiority high above. With the downed pilot rescued, the demonstration comes to a close, concluding this incredible insight into some of the many roles for which the USAF is constantly prepared. Twenty twenty two saw the long awaited return of perhaps the greatest military aviation spectacle on Earth, the Royal International Air Tattoo. Two hundred and sixty six aircraft from thirty three nations participated in the show, the crowning glory being a US Air Force E four B Nightwatch participating in its first overseas air show in almost fifty years of service. The static display included such rarities as the soon-to-be-retired Italian AMX A11, Japanese C2, Brazilian KC390 and Romanian AN30, as well as an impressive lineup of classic jets, the A4 and Draken among them. The flying display was one of the strongest in recent years, featuring seven national aerobatic teams, including the multi-award winning Black Eagles from Korea. In a Riat first, Switzerland's PC-7 team performed a short, coordinated display with an F-18 Hornet. And the Irish Air Corps' Silver Swallows were another real rarity. Riat 2022 was their first airshow appearance since 1998. The 2022 trophy for the best solo jet demonstration went to the Hungarian Air Force's Yas 39C Gripen now the only military display team in the world to demonstrate a dump and burn as part of its performance. The best individual flying demonstration was deemed to be Italy's barnstorming aerobatic performance in the C-27J Spartan. Finally, the award for the best display by an overseas participant went to the Austrian Air Force's quick reaction alert demonstration. Other REACT debuts at this year's show included France's new Mustang X-Ray tactical display and the Airbus Beluga XL. We've teamed up with the Airshow's official broadcaster, Planes TV, to bring you several of Riyadh's most notable performances. Planes TV is also producing a three-hour souvenir programme of the event, which will be available through their subscription streaming service, watch.planestv.com.
We'll now look at the Black Eagles from the Republic of Korea, flying eight locally produced T-50Bs. One of the Black Eagles specialities is performing extremely challenging formation changes, often alternating between very tight and very wide formation shapes in quick succession. During this next loop, the team will change formations twice, first from canard into a wide star formation. The wider the formation shape, the harder it is for each aircraft to accurately judge their position. So formation changes like this, taking place at speed during aerobatic manoeuvres, are virtually unprecedented. Now on the downline, the team collapse into a tight formation shape, Penta. The team made their international debut in 2012, immediately cementing their reputation as one of the world's top aerobatic teams by claiming both of the most prestigious awards at the Air Tattoo that year. Since then, they've improved yet further, adding new, highly original manoeuvres, such as this incredible formation change known as the Vortex, which sees four jets swap sides of the formation by means of opposing aileron rolls. Even familiar manoeuvres are given a novel twist, such as this highly dynamic and unconventional reimagining of the rollbacks. This year, the team repeated their success of 2012, winning the As the Crow Flies trophy for the best display as voted by spectators, and the King Hussein Memorial Sword for the best overall flying display as voted by the Flying Control Committee. Here, the team perform a world unique manoeuvre called the Tiger, in which they draw the symbol from their national flag. The Black Eagle's appearance at Riyadh came as part of a wider world tour, which also included visits to Poland, Egypt and the Philippines. During the tour, Poland announced that they were ordering the Korean-built jet in preference to the F-16V. Now with the backing of Airbus, the T-50 looks likely to gain further European export customers. Black Eagles end their display with another extraordinary new manoeuvre, the Tornado Break, which puts all eight aircraft straight into the landing pattern. Another very memorable display, and a Riyadh debut no less, was the Austrian Air Force's Quick Reaction Alert demonstration, which won the RAF CTE trophy for the best display by an overseas participant. After demonstrating a real-time interception and forced landing of a C-130K Hercules, the two Eurofighters broke into a highly energetic air-to-air -air combat demonstration. The Austrian Air Force has just 15 Eurofighters, which are the only fast jets in their inventory nowadays. They are all relatively old Trash 1 jets, which haven't been much upgraded over the years. As a result, 
Austria intended to divest themselves of their Eurofighters in the early 2020s and buy newer, cheaper platforms to replace them. the war in Ukraine has changed these plans. It seems all 15 jets will now be retained, upgraded and bolstered by the purchase of a further three second-hand Eurofighters from Germany. Another display of note, albeit not an award winner, this combat search and rescue demonstration by the Czech Air Force with a Mi-171 SH and a Mi-24V. This was the final appearance of a Czech Mi-24 at the air tattoo, as the type was retired at the end of the 2022 season. It is expected that Czechia's Mi-24 fleet will now be transferred to the armed forces of Ukraine. First flying in 1972 but still in production today, the Mi-24 has a unique place in combat aviation, being the only battlefield attack helicopter to also offer substantial transport capability. Because of this, the Czech Air Force has been unable to identify a single type that can replace it, instead opting to split their order between the AH-17Z Viper and the UH-1Y Venom. To watch all of Planes TV's coverage of the Air Tattoo 2022 and access their back catalogue of airshow actions stretching back 30 years, use the link in the description for 50% off your first three month subscription to Planes TV On Demand. The Czech Mi 24 isn't the only helicopter leaving service this year. Air power at Zeltweg Air Base was probably the final major airshow appearance for the Austrian Air Force's Alouette 3s. Another highlight of the nine hour long flying display was a tri-nation NATO Tiger Meat formation. And there was a hugely significant moment of genuine airshow history with a Xi'an Y-20 on static display, the first participation of an operational Chinese military aircraft in a Western airshow. Also returning this year for the first time since the pandemic was the Miramar airshow with its famous Marine Air Ground Task Force demonstration. The performance included two each of the FA-18C Hornet, F-35B Lightning II and MV-22B Osprey, and one each of the KC-130J, AH-1Z Viper, UH-1Y Venom and CH-53E Super Stallion. Miramar, Air Power and Riat were all last held in 2019, but the last time Edwards AFB opened its doors to the public was in 2009. That all changed in 2022 as the base celebrated 75 years since the first official manned supersonic flight, which took place at this very location. That record-breaking flight was conducted by the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. Fittingly, its successor, NASA, had a strong presence at the airshow to celebrate the occasion. Most notably running walkthrough tours of their joint American-German 747SP flying observatory, Sophia. Parked nearby, a very unusual airshow participant in the form of the mock-up Dark Star prop used in Top Gun Maverick, sighted next to an SR-71 Blackbird. There were also some significant experimental aircraft in the static display. That included the first ever F-35A prototype, one of just two double delta-winged F-16XLs, and the world's only X-62 Vista. Remarkably, Sophia also took part in the flying display for what turned out to be its first and last airshow appearance. The aircraft was retired to the Pima Air and Space Museum in December.
also taking to the air was NASA's G3 flying testbed, an ex-USAF C-20A that is now being used to test a new warping wing concept, which could eliminate panel gaps around flaps and ailerons. It was joined in the air by two of NASA's chase planes, an F-15D Eagle and a newly delivered F-A-18B Hornet, still in the colours of its former operator, the US Navy. The two jets performed a sonic boom demonstration as part of the show. The F-15 created a conventional boom in level flight. And the F-18 executed a low boom dive maneuver, creating a quieter, muffled sound. Oh, there, it there it was. Did you hear that, folks? Barely a thump, ladies and gentlemen, in the second one. A good mix of Air Force-operated Edwards assets staged an airfield assault demonstration, which saw one F-22A Raptor, one F-35A Lightning II and two F-16Cs perform simulated attack runs. Later on in the demonstration, in a slight departure from normal tactics, a B-1B Lancer arrived on the scene at low level in the close air support role. And here's something else the B-1 doesn't do very often, a complete roll. With enemy ground forces eliminated, Special Forces troops can now be inserted by C-17. They are using special noiseless parachutes developed by the test centre here at Edwards. In the USAF 75th anniversary year, we just had to feature a performance by the Thunderbirds. And where better than at Edwards, with our viewpoint at the top of the control tower. In 2021, the Thunderbirds updated their display routine for the first time in many years, making for a performance that is shorter and slicker than before, with a particular focus on crowd-pleasing sneak passes like this one.
The show is something of a homecoming for the commander of the Thunderbirds, Lieutenant Colonel Justin Elliott, who studied at the US Air Force Test Pilot School here at Edwards in 2015. Twenty twenty two saw a number of teams adding extra aircraft to their performance, and we shall now look at some of those. We enjoyed the US Navy's E two D Hawkeye solo demonstration in Airshow Action twenty twenty one, but at this year's Air Venture they added a second aircraft and performed a two ship mini demonstration. This hopefully paves the way for a full two ship demo in twenty twenty three. Last year we also enjoyed the French Navy's two-ship Rafale M tactical display. They too added another aircraft in 2022, performing with three Rafales at Paris Air Legend. Their routine opened with a formation pass with a P-51B Mustang. The Mustang then cleared the way for the three jets to return for a buddy-buddy refuelling demonstration. Next, a display by a Mohain Saulnier MS-760 Paris to represent French Navy heritage, followed by the rest of the Rafale tactical display. Last year we also saw the Royal Air Force's latest Typhoon FGR-4 special scheme. This year, Blackjack was back, but with a difference, flying in formation with a Spitfire Mark IIa from the Battle of Britain Memorial flight. This display is known as the Synchro Pair and has been seen on several previous occasions, most recently in 2015 to mark the 75th anniversary of the Battle of Britain. That year, the two aircraft performed a full 10-minute sequence of formation flybys, opposition passes and synchronised aerobatics. 2022's revival of the synchro pair display was much shorter, comprising of three flypasts followed by an opposition break. As soon as the two aircraft split apart, the Spitfire clears the airspace and the Typhoon launches into its full solo display. Originally, this blackjack special scheme was intended to be used during the 2021 and 2022 display seasons. However, it now seems that it may be retained for 2023. Now for some new special schemes that we haven't seen before. The US Air Force trainer fleet has a large number of heritage schemes, including this pair of T-6 Texan IIs and this T-38 Talon, which appeared at AirVenture. Also from the USAF, this F-16D appeared on static display at the Central Coast Airfest in first Gulf War desert camouflage. This very aircraft was the first F-16 to score an air-to-air -air kill over the skies of Iraq in 1992. The RAF Tutor T-1 resumed airshow performances this year for the first time since 2018. The airframe used for the first few shows of the year was painted in this unusual black and yellow scheme. These colours were applied as part of an experiment to gauge the best anti-collision colour scheme for RAF training aircraft and the scheme was never removed after the experiment ended. 
2022 marked the 80th anniversary of the Normandy Near Men, the famous French fighter squadron embedded within the Soviet Air Force during the Second World War. The squadron is now part of the French Air and Space Force and flies the Rafale C, one of which was painted up to mark the occasion. This wasn't the only Rafale special scheme of the year. The Rafale solo display gets a new paint scheme each display season, and the 2022 jet was painted in a striking black and silver livery. The Rafale is an extremely exciting aircraft to watch at an airshow, thanks to its tight turn radius and exceptional roll rate, which, at 270 degrees per second, is the fastest of any fourth or fifth generation fighter. This year's display pilot, Capitaine Bertrand Boutin, uses this manoeuvrability to good effect, with a powerful and punchy yet flowing performance, in which it's often difficult to tell where one manoeuvre ends and the next begins. This year's Rafale solo display is one of the shortest fast jet solo displays on the airshow circuit, yet it still crams an above-average number of manoeuvres into its short length. To be precise, 14 distinct manoeuvres in just 8 minutes. In fact, the display is so intense that, apart from during this slightly longer gap as the aircraft decelerates for a slow pass, the team's narrator doesn't speak at all during the demonstration. There's simply no point where the aircraft gets far enough away from the crowd for the commentary to be audible. This high level of intensity is made possible not only by the Rafale's manoeuvrability, but also by the imaginative and highly tuned choreography of the routine itself. The display makes unusually liberal use of the 45 degree intermediate display lines, which, compared to many other demonstration teams, massively reduces the time taken for the aircraft to turn around between each manoeuvre. Like the Rafale solo display, Canada's CF-18 demo team gets a new paint scheme each season. The 2022 scheme features an operational grey colour palette fitting in with the team's theme of fighter operations at home and abroad. Honeycomb patterns on the wings and vertical stabilisers allude to the CF-18's namesake, the Hornet. Sadly, Canada's CF-18 special schemes have been getting rather less colourful over the last few seasons, and in 2023, for the first time in many years, the aircraft will be a standard grey operational jet, with no demo team markings at all. This is quite possibly the very last CF-18 demo team special scheme. Our final special scheme is the Belgian Air Force's 2022-2024 F-16AM Fighting Falcon display jet, known as the Dream Viper. It's seen here during its public debut at the Cosford Air Show in the UK. This is no ordinary F-16 demonstration, and not just because of the brand new paint scheme. 
The display pilot is Captain Stephen de Vries, the fifth most experienced F-16 pilot in the world and the highest hour F-16 pilot outside the United States. In his 2022 display sequence, he's been able to fly the F-16 like no airshow pilot has done before. Not just does this performance have almost the same level of intensity as the Rafale we saw a moment ago, but there is a particular focus on extreme negative G manoeuvres, far beyond what frontline fighters would usually perform. In fact, the display has been nominated by Lockheed Martin as their preferred F-16 display team on the world stage, despite the fact that this is an ageing Block 15 A model jet that was delivered almost 40 years ago. This is perhaps the most impressive of the three negative G manoeuvres, a full outside split S as the aircraft pushes minus 4G from a 60 degree climb back into level flight. Now Vrisk repositions the aircraft as quickly as possible with a conventional half Cuban before pulling up again, rolling just beyond the knife edge and initiating a hard outside turn. This manoeuvre is perhaps even more punishing than the one we've just seen, because as soon as the turn is complete, Vrisk pulls hard back on the stick to snap from negative to positive G and immediately repositions for his next pass. This outstanding display brings us to the end of Military Airshow Action 2022. To see more of all the displays and events you've just witnessed, check out the links in the video description. Part 2 of Airshow Action 2022 will focus on the year's best Warbird performances. Here's a look at what's coming up.